atmosphere in Southern California is normally laid back, but that's not the way it is tonight as we get set for game six, where either the Lakers will capture the world championship or the Sixers will have fought back once again to force a seventh and deciding game on Thursday. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton. L.A. would naturally want to win before the home fans, and the Sixers would still like to become the first team in NBA history to come from behind 3-1 to one in a championship series and go all the way. The series has been filled with dazzling performance by a remarkable array of stars in games that have been breakneck speed in pacing. And it also has been a bizarre series and unusual in that with the exception of game number one, the team that has had the early footing and has taken control has ultimately blown out their opponent. How they do in a down-to-the-wire close game still remains to be seen and hopefully we'll have that contest today. We already talked about Kareem and how important he is as a player, but he has been suffering from migraine headaches and as a result missed the final workout this afternoon. He is in uniform, and how will the headaches affect him in this game? Will they? I don't think they're going to affect me at all. I had one uh, early this morning, and it's passed, and the aftermath of it is passed. I, I feel fine. Are you especially primed to come out for this particular game after the beating you took against Philadelphia in the fifth game. Yeah, I, I think that uh, everybody in, in, uh, on our team wants this game very badly, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to take it. Kareem is looking for his third title. Here's a man that won 11 with the Boston Celtics, Bill Russell, another great center. And, Russ, you know how important the center position, particularly Kareem's position, is. What is he feeling coming into this game? How will he do? Well, with the confidence of all great players, he has to know that if he plays great, his team will win. And he has to go out there and say, well, I'm going to play great tonight. And the results will be evident. Pressure on which team? The pressure will probably be on the Lakers because it already has been conceded that they are a great team. Now, in order to be a great team, you have to win. And if they don't win tonight, I don't think that they can go into Philadelphia and beat the 76ers. You know, the people here at the Forum are in a festive mood. They expect a celebration, but I remember one time that a celebration never really came off here at the Forum. You know about it. What happened? My last game as a professional, we, we played here in the, in the Forum, and we got in the building, and there was 10,000 balloons up there. 10,000 of them, about 25 cases of champagne. And they, and they had a program all typed out. They said, uh, what are we going to do when, after the Lakers win the game tonight? And someone put one of the programs in our locker room. And so I said to my players, because I was coaching at the time, I said, for you guys that can read, read this. That's all they needed, right? That was it. Hopefully the Lakers won't make the same mistake twice. Also with us is Brent Musburger, who has some thoughts on this NBA World Championship. Brent? Dick, thank you very much. You know, we are blessed in this country with three major team sports that are a very important part of our culture, basketball, baseball, and football. Yet basketball is the only one with true worldwide acceptance. From Brazil to deep into the heart of the Soviet Union, basketballs are dribbled across political and philosophical boundaries. Basketball truly is a sport for every land. And our stage tonight is a very unique American setting. Los Angeles is that seductive combination of wanderlust, tinsel, sunshine, and a lot of pleasure for pleasure's sake. You can see that basketball is the common language which unites all of these people in the forum tonight. It cuts across the socioeconomic groups. The beautiful people are here tonight. And down at courtside for each of those seats, to watch that closely, you would pay $90. The cheapest seat in the forum tonight, way up on top, that'll go for $15. So it helps to have money in Southern California. Now, most of the folks in the forum tonight are pulling for the Lakers to win this championship. But because in Los Angeles there are so many transplanted Easterners who have not forgotten their original loyalties, there are some folks who want very much for Julius Irving to walk away with that championship. And you know, frequently we undervalue the tremendous skills of the NBA players. They become blurred with their effortless grace. But it is now time for the sixth game of this NBA championship and you are going to see the game's finest go for the sport's highest prize, the NBA title. So sit back and relax. It's showtime. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Game 6 of the 1982 NBA World Championship Series between the Philadelphia 76ers and the Los Angeles Lakers. 
Now let's meet the starting lineups of the Eastern Conference champions, the Philadelphia 76ers. Starting at guard in his fourth season from West Texas State, number 10, Maurice Cheeks. Maurice Cheeks starting at guard. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game six of the 1982 NBA World Championship Series between the Philadelphia 76ers and the Los Angeles Lakers. Now let's meet the starting lineups of the Eastern Conference champion, the Philadelphia 76ers. Starting at guard in his fourth season from West Texas State, number 10, Maurice Cheeks. At the other guard in his second year from Southwest Louisiana, number 22, Andrew Tony. Starting at center in his ninth season from Albany State, number 11, Caldwell Jones. Starting at forward in his eighth campaign from North Carolina, number 24, Bobby Jones. And at the other forward in his 11th season from Massachusetts, number six, the doctor, Julius Irving. And the head coach of the 76ers, Billy Cunningham. And now let's meet the starting lineups of the Western Conference champions, the Los Angeles Lakers. Starting at forward in his first season from Santa Clara, number 31, Kurt Rambis. At the other forward in his eighth season from UCLA, number 52, Jamal Wilkes. Starting at guard in his fifth season from Duquesne, number 10, Norm Nixon. the other guard in his third year from Michigan State, number 32, Urban Magic Johnson. And starting at center in his 13th season from UCLA, number 33, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And introducing the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, Pat Riley. So without question, we have a aroused audience here in Los Angeles for game number six as Billy Cunningham gives his final instructions to the 76ers. And over at the Laker huddle, Pat Riley talks to his team. Such debris can cause serious injury and violators are subject to injection and arrest. We also remind you that any spectator going on the court interrupting play in any manner will be ejected and And the Lakers are ready. They won against this team two years ago. But as Brent Musburger said, Julius Irving has never won an NBA world title. This man has, and he may be coming out with a vengeance after the jostling and the muscling he took in game number five. And Caldwell Jones, the quiet warrior on this Philadelphia ball club, one of the best defensive centers in the league. We're set to go, game number six. Lakers lead three games to two. Kurt Rambis of the Lakers controls the tip. And Norm Nixon, the quarterback of the team, will be opposed by Bo Cheeks. The classic matchup of two outstanding point guards. Tony is guarding Magic Johnson. And they go to the big guy, double team, Magic Johnson. And pressure by Nixon on the backcourt. Very important as to how Philadelphia responds in the early going. When they've been flat, they've been very, very flat. Wilkes is on Tony. Caldwell Jones outside. Kareem is with him all the way. Going to the hoop by Kareem. And Magic comes down with it to Nixon. He has Wilkes on his left. Wilkes. This is a Lakers start, even though we have a long, long way to go. Andrew Tony looking for help, swinging the ball away to the Julius Serving. The Lakers have opened up with a vengeance, and Billy Cunningham wants a timeout. It's six to nothing, and the crowd hasn't stopped cheering yet. So far, Kareem has made himself uh, very important in this game.
three for three, all layups. How important, Bill Russell, is it for the Sixers to get back in a hurry? It's very important for them to establish themselves in the game. So far, they haven't, they haven't gone inside, but they have now, and the, the Lakers are up to it. Now, the Lakers are starting out. Their sneakers are not touching the floor. They're so high and ready. Loose ball after Nixon's miss, kicked out of bounds. Philadelphia, loose ball foul, and it's against the Lakers, and it's Kurt Rambis who commits the personal foul. The officials in tonight's game, Daryl Garrison and Jack Madden, and Ed Rush is the alternate who sits over at the scorer's table. So Philadelphia has tried to get inside, but they've come away with nothing. Bobby Jones' shot hits the side of the backboard. So the Sixers are obviously tight. Not the Lakers. The basket counts in a foul on a feed to Jamal Wilkes. But it was a three-man play from Kareem to Magic to Jamal Wilkes, who's having trouble with his outside shot. That one was a great percentage shot for him. Foul on Bobby Jones, his first, and it's an eight-to-nothing game, the Lakers. Now, as I was saying, the Lakers are, are, are sky high. Now, the Sixers are going to have to get back into this game, get into the uh, floor thing. They're going to have to slow the ball game. They, have to move the, they don't shoot well. They don't move the ball. The outlet pass practically to midcourt, Andrew Tony, and the trap. That is not an illegal defense, by the way. That is okay to trap the team. They double team the man with the ball, try to find a free man. The Sixers are obviously unraveled in the early moment. Andrew Tony trying to get him started. Can and Magic comes down with it. A three on two, but Julius knocks the ball into the hands of Mo Cheeks. Rambis hits the ground. Nothing called. And now Another steal almost by Magic. It'll be Philadelphia ball. But the Sixers are tight 0 for 5, and the Lakers are rolling. And that one of the, the five shots was a good shot. 9.48 remaining in the first period. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell in what could be the deciding game. Julius Irving hits outside. The doctor averaging 24 points a game. He had 23 in red-hot shooting in the second half Sunday. Jamal Wilkes, guarded by Tony, a three-inch height advantage, hasn't been a factor so far, into Kareem, double team for the moment with Cheeks and Caldwell Jones, and we'll have a whistle call, and we'll have a three-second violation called against Los Angeles, so that'll turn it over and give it to the 76ers, who have struggled here at the Forum. They have had, not had much success here in Los Angeles against this team since 1972. Andrew Tony. And a loose ball foul. Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones, second personal foul. If Philadelphia has to shoot from outside to get any points, they're going to be in deep trouble. They, they are not effective shooting outside unless they do it off of penetration. If Maurice Cheeks and one of their guys can penetrate and then pass off, they shoot very well from the outside. But if they just pass the ball on the perimeter, they do not shoot very well from the outside. Now they're double teaming Kareem. But there's a sky hook or a jump. Well, that's better than a sky hook. Foul is on Caldwell Jones. Basket does not count. And Darryl Dawkins is coming the ball game, replacing Bobby Jones. That's not a good sign for Philadelphia. Jones has had a good game on Sunday. Dawkins had his best game of the series with 20 points. Inside, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar misses it, Caldwell Jones the rebound. He told me yesterday, I have to set the tempo and get that defensive board for the team to do well and do this as Mo Cheeks penetrates for the bucket. And they're going to call a foul on the 76ers, a loose ball foul on Andrew Tony, And for Tony, his first personal foul. And Billy Cunningham is off the bench. Don't tell me that! Cunningham yelling at Darryl Garrison. He played on the last Sixer championship team in 1967. Lakers by five. Sixers trying to get back into the flow before they fall way behind as L.A. red hot. And they call it another foul on Andrew Tony, I think. Andrews Tony's second personal foul. He has not had much foul trouble in this series, but in previous series he's had, and that could cripple the Sixers if he's not effective because they need him for his offense. He scored 31 points on Sunday, and in the playoffs has gone over the 30 mark six times. Now the Lakers have got off very well and cold the tempo. Consequently, they've been shooting much better than the Sixers. 
But the Sixers are a team that it takes them sometimes a pretty good while to get started. But the key to the, their game has to be when Murray Sheets penetrates or, or makes a couple outside shots and gets them off because then they shoot very well, especially when he penetrates. They find and they overthrow Julius Irving. He controls the ball. They have 13 seconds on the clock. And Caldwell Jones, this is inside. Daryl Dawkins makes no mistake on the follow-up. The 76ers have to watch out on defense because they have picked up five fouls in three minutes and 30 seconds. And now a technical foul has been called on Billy Cunningham. And he is enraged on the Sixers' sideline. And if he gets hit with another one, he'll have an early exit here. Magic Johnson will shoot the technical. He has been the best free throw shooter in the series at 80% for L.A. Lakers scored the first nine points. Sixers have come back somewhat. It's 12 to 6 L.A. Nearly four minutes gone by in the first period. That's the first technical foul that's been made, I think, in this series. A lot have been called, mostly by illegal defenses, which means the second transgression called by the official. Cheeks is on Magic, gets it into Randall. The Lakers are treating the Sixers as they did in games three and four when it was no contest. Caldwell Jones up top, inside, against Rambis. Daryl Dawkins draws the foul, so Rambis fouls Dawkins, who will shoot. Now, Daryl Dawkins has a good game. Wilts to Rambis on a knee pass. That's Johnson to Rambis, we should say. And take that, large person. So Dawkins is on the line. That's team foul number two on the Lakers. Sixers are already over the limit. If Daryl Dawkins has a good game and doesn't get in early foul trouble, the Sixers are a very different team and they're a much better team and much more effective because he does things for them. He closes the middle down and he gives them a, one, another outside shooter. Steal by Julius Irving. He's got cheeks and Mo going to the hoop. And that's what Philadelphia has to do. They're no good in a half-court game, the way they're styling. But Norm Nixon comes right back and hits, and that's what L.A. does so well. They'll score off of your basket. The six-point L.A. lead, seven minutes and ten seconds remaining first period. Lakers clogging the middle and double-teaming Andrew Toney, an explosive scorer. Maurice Cheeks working against Nixon and fires up a long-range shot. Kareem the rebound at great position. Here's Magic, who already has five points, three rebounds, three assists, and a block shot. Plenty of time on the 24-second shot clock. Magic controlling the MVP two years ago in the championship series against these Sixers. Good flip from Kareem, knocked away, and it's not recovered by Kareem, and he made a valiant effort. Philadelphia ball, and the crowd gives Kareem an ovation for his hustle. And if people thought that, even with that fast start the Lakers had, that they were going to run away with this game, they're in for a long evening because this Philadelphia team, when once they get into their rhythm, they can play with anyone. Julius goes inside on a perfectly and executed play. What are the reason. signs that Philadelphia was coming back when it was 9-0, Bill? Well, when Julius started to work defensively, he set the pace for them. They started to play better defense. They made a couple of steals, and that's the way their offense is generated, from their defense. Kareem, it is still L.A. ball as he's going against Daryl Dawkins. L.A. won the Pacific Division by five games over Seattle. Philadelphia lost by five games to Boston, but the Sixers won a dramatic seventh game series for the Eastern Championship over Boston. Wilkes. Find that jump shot. He said, I hope to find it in LA and I only need it for one game. The jit the dock across to Tony. Baseline jumper short. Tipped up and Caldwell Jones makes in a tremendous, incessant effort. And on Sunday, every time Julius Irving had a rebound, offensive or defensive, the Sixers scored on Sunday. That is an incredible fact. Into Rambis, good position inside. Kurt Rambis, who is played his best ball in the first quarter of games in the playoff. McAdoo will come in, a big story there. Rambis is three for three. Four-point Laker lead, 5.25 to go first period. And the foul is called against Jamal Will. That will be the third team foul on the Lakers. And Bob McAdoo is coming to the ball game 
for Los Angeles. McAdoo had 23 points and has been a savior since being acquired Christmas Eve from the Nets. And he gives him uh, another good outside shooting threat. So they can open it up for so the Kareem and get this guy a little better. Dawkins and Magic, the leading rebounder on both teams in the series, got the rebound on Dawkins' miss. Good stop and go move by Nixon. And an offensive foul on the elbow called against the Lakers. After Nixon made a fine move and Caldwell Jones was there. And the personal foul is on Nixon. Now here's Nixon penetrating. He gets in there and now comes, there's a foul right there when he put that left hand out. First personal on Norm Nixon. Does not count as a team foul. Philadelphia trailing by four points. L.A. trapping. Michael Cooper has come in the game, known for his defense, but he can score as well. Maurice Cheek misses. Magic Johnson, another rebound. Gets it out to Nixon. He's the man that makes it go. And Cooper. No one picked up Cooper. And the Sixers have to get back on defense against this dazzling fast break of the lake. And this group that they have out there, with the exception of Kareem, they are exceptionally fast people. So that their fast break is... Very devastating. Good, good, good man. Shot by Daryl Dawkins. Dawkins has six points. He is the high scorer for Philadelphia. Rambis, who's on the bench, was three for three for six points for the Lakers. And the one thing the Sixers don't want to see is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bob McAdoo in the lineup at the same time. McAdoo can hit the outside shot and is tough inside. Kareem is fouled going in. He will go to the line to shoot. And coming into the ball game. Bobby Jones back in there replaces Julius Irving who goes out with four. Here's Bobby Jones and when Bobby Jones is scoring the running game is on. Julius goes out with four points. Foul on Dawkins. Kareem shooting two. Now the, both the, the teams have settled down now. The Lakers came out and their sneakers, I said their sneakers weren't touching the floor. Now they're down into the game where we got to we got to face up, guys, and let's play ball. Possible to come out, as the Sixers think they've had in the past, too emotional at the top. Yes, you can very easily. And there's an air ball. You, you get throw. down, and it's so hard to get it back up. And that's why a lot of coaches try to get their guys not to come out so emotional so they can come out and play in an even game. Four minutes and ten seconds remaining in the first period. Lakers leading three games to two against Philadelphia. Cheeks penetrating and a baseline jumper by Andrew Tony doesn't drop. And McAdoo gets it out to Nixon. L.A. wants to run, run, run. That's their style, and they do it so well because they have so many good passes. McAdoo hits. Bob McAdoo. Great That's the outside McAdoo. shot that opens up the, the offense for the Lakers. They have Kareem to do the damage inside. McAdoo practically unstoppable with that jump shot outside. 3.39 remaining in the first period. Dawkins going to the hoop. Interesting about Darryl Dawkins right now. He seems to be playing very much under control. McAdoo commits the foul, and that is that Dawkins has not had good back-to-back -back games. He's had his best contest in games one, three, and five. Has not been effective in games two and four, but he's off to a good start here. And he's playing much more under control. I think that a lot of the publicity in the papers here were about the fouling that they thought he did in the previous games, and so maybe he's backing off a little bit enough so that he won't get in foul trouble. He has eight points, the high score in the ball game is Darryl Dawkins. He came from high school to the pro ranks, and he's muscling Kareem front of him, and the follow-up shot by Michael Cooper inside. Philadelphia cannot afford for L.A. to get those second shots when they do well defensively, as they presumably do there. Maurice Cheeks gives up the dribble out to Dawkins. McAdoo is giving Dawkins a shot the way he's playing. Under three minutes to go, first period, and Magic Johnson fouls Bobby Jones, and that'll be the 15th foul on the Lakers, and Bobby Jones will go to the line. Irvin Magic Johnson, MVP in the playoffs in 1980, and a candidate once more to win the top player award. But Philadelphia very much in it after falling behind 9-0, and with 2.56 to go in the first period, we have a timeout. of the Memphis Open begins Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time on CBS Sports. We talked about Magic Johnson as the top rebounder in this series. He is the third player in history to corral 700 rebounds and dish 700 assists in a season. Only Oscar Robertson and Will Chamberlain achieve that. And what makes that such an incredible statistic, Bill? You have to be strong enough to rebound, and you have to be a good enough passer and, and get the teammates to believe in your passing enough to cut to the basket and to make the, the shots. The two very dark skills, strength, good vision, and great passing. Bobby Jones misses the free throw, which is rare for him. And even 
more amazing misses both. Speaking of magic with the ball, he already has, you know, five rebounds tonight and four assists, so he's off to a fine start. Michael Cooper guarded by Bobby Jones goes up with a jump shot. Michael Cooper had an incredible game Sunday, hitting 8 of 11 from the field for 18 points, a career scoring high in the playoffs. He hasn't missed yet in three tries. 2.35 to go first period. Dawkins moving inside and setting a screen. We'll have an L.A. foul. Magic says Dawkins should be called for it, but they get Magic with it, and it's his second foul. And he'll go to the line to shoot this one. Well, as he was going by, Dawkins says, uh, there's no hurry. Now, here's the play. Dawkins is setting the pick, and as uh, he goes by, he just holds him just a little bit there. Jamal Wilkes has come back in. Magic Johnson goes out with two personal fouls. And Clint Richardson, who has been a, an effective third guard, is in there. He had a playoff high Sunday with 11 points, with five rebounds. What makes him such a good rebound? I only asked him yesterday, he's 6'2". He's not 6'3", as he's listed. He says, I learned in Seattle to move without the ball. You're amazed what kind of opportunities come up. That's Clint Richardson. Back into his screen in front of What's so tough is that quick release and the shot off the move. He doesn't put the ball down. He just goes up with it on the run. Clint Richardson off balance and off the glass. Kareem clears. And here come the Greyhounds. They got four men down. Philadelphia also comes back on the fence to slow it up. Winding down in two minutes to go in the first half. McAdoo. He has never won a championship even though he's won just about every other honor in pro basketball. And the biggest lead of the game now. Ten points for the Lakers. Jigs controlling in the corner. Knocked away by Kareem out of bounds. We want to remind you at halftime, we will have live comments by Larry Holmes, the heavyweight champion, and Jerry Cooney, the challenger. John Madden is with Cooney in Las Vegas. And Brett Musburger on the two-way will be talking to Larry Holmes coming your way at halftime. And Larry Holmes is a big 76er fan. Big fight coming up Friday. Heavyweight championship, and they're both watching the game in Vegas. Darryl Dawkins hits the jump shot for 10 points. He's four for five. The alley -oop play to Michael Cooper, which they've dubbed Cooper Loop doesn't work, and now on a four-on-three, Dawkins is called for the offensive foul as he drives McAdoo into that stanchion, and he does it hard. Two fouls on Dawkins. I think maybe the next time they might let, they may be tempted to let him shoot that. Now here he comes. Well, there's McAdoo, right there. That is a marvelous athlete that just made that move. And for a guy to stand there and take that charge, that says something Discretion too. is not necessarily the greater part of valor. One minute, ten seconds to go. Kareem misses the alley-oop. McAdoo in a crowd. Bobby Jones gets it to Dawkins. He wants it to a ball handle. He finds Cheeks. Cheeks is in the lane. Knights his way through on a fine play. The tip in by Bobby Jones. His first points of the game. And a six-point lead now for the Lakers when they're under a minute to play in the first. And they go on the other way. Offensive foul called against Los Angeles. Kareem, his first foul. And vehemently protesting that to Jack Madden. 32. What uh, Darryl Douglas did on that last play was he pushed Kareem enough to make Kareem react, and they caught the second one. L.A.'s turned it over now seven times to once for Philadelphia. Dawkins is on the bench. Job well done for Darrell with ten points. Caldwell Jones replaces it, but Bobby Jones misses the outside shot, and they tie it up inside. Philadelphia still, despite a few instances of good execution, doesn't seem really smooth out there with some outside shots. Well, they're, they're really smooth considering the defense. The Lakers are a great defensive team, and it's hard once you get behind in, in, in catching up to really be, have a smooth offense. But Sunday, they looked awfully smooth. It'll be Philadelphia ball as Nixon can't save it. So having the lead, as we said at the top, so important in this series. If both of these teams are so tough that if they, once they get a lead, it's hard to catch up because they handle the ball so well and they take care of it. Still Philadelphia ball. They have 22 seconds on the clock. That's the 24-second clock. You're looking at the game clock there. Bobby 
Jones will inbound. He has two. Dawkins with 10, the leading scorer. Three players have six for Los Angeles. Julius, fancy behind his back, trying to double team him. Gets the ball inside, blocked by McAdoo. McAdoo shot, blocks the shot. Jamal Wilkes at the other end. Rambis. Foul. Good hustle by Kurt Rambis. in the foul. And that's one of the things that makes the, the Lakers so tough. They get inside and they pound the boards. They're one of the best rebounding teams in basketball. And here's one of the reasons. Kurt Rambis has really given them a, another strong guy on the offensive board. Free agent was a number three draft choice by the New York Knicks. Many of you know his story already. He played in Athens, Greece last year, won a job on a tryout as Tony comes back in the game, and then when Mitch Kupchak went down with an injury in December, Rambis ultimately wound That's up with a spring. power forward's job Everybody and has been superb as the dirty uh, dirty work underneath. And all they want from his is defense and rebound. Mitch Kupchak will undergo his second operation on his knee tomorrow. Final seconds of the first period, Lakers by six. Andrew Tony, who has yet to score in this game, he's averaging nearly 25 and a half, finally hits the bucket at the buzzer to bring Philadelphia to within four. And that is the end of the first period. The Lakers 30, the 76ers 26. And the NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. That have come back after being down 3 to 2. By the way, the Sixers could be only the second team in history to force a seventh game after trailing 3 1 if they win. As we told you, Bill Russell's Boston teams did it twice, and of course, the big balloon game was one of them. <laughs> it's tough to come back, you know, from 3 to 2 in a series like this, but Philadelphia came back after not scoring for 2 minutes and 20 seconds at the start of the ball game, and what engineered their comeback, at least to be within four? Their defense picked up. They are a team that they need their defense to generate offense. If they're playing bad defense, they don't shoot well. When they're playing good defense, it seems to pick up their, their shooting rhythm. And so uh, I think the key play was when Julius Irving stole the ball out of the corner, blocked the shot, and came out with it, and they went down and scored because they got him moving defensively. They led the league in block shots and steals. They were not an outstanding rebounding team during the regular year. Start of the second period, the alley-oop to Bobby Jones. He can't control it. Rambis winds up with it, and Jamal Wilkes ahead of the field. Jamal Wilkes, who's still leading the Lakers in scoring at over 18 a game in this series, despite his problem shooting from outside. And the Sixers have to get back off the defense. McAdoo is just guarding the middle playing his own defense and Andrew Tony misses and Rambis the basket will count Rambis interfere with the ball on the top he talks so much of zone defense for the uninitiated it means guarding an area and not a player and in pro basketball that is not allowed I know that it's illegal Michael Cooper well, they call it illegal defense they don't want to say zone they don't even want to use that word Jamal Wilkes that's the shot LA fans know about Fluid, Jamal Wilkes from UCLA. He is four for six now, but that's the first outside shot that he's hit. No basket and an L.A. foul as Magic Johnson comes back in. And Mike Bannum. Mike Bannum making his first appearance for Philadelphia. Second offensive rebounder for the Sixers in this series. Now, Dick, the substitution pattern that the coaches use is a tricky thing because a coach has to have certain things out there he feels to win. And to try to keep that combination with fouls, fatigue, and all these things involved, uh, he has to really know his team. Tony goes up, misses the shot. Loose ball picked up. Here's Cooper ahead of the field. Magic to Cooper. And the Lakers are beating the Sixers down at the end of the court. An eight-point lead, and Philadelphia will call a timeout. Biggest lead was 10. Philadelphia has not tasted the lead in this game. A 20-second timeout. 20-second timeout called for by Philadelphia. So they have to regroup in a hurry, but they've got to get back on defense. Well, it's very difficult to get back on the defensive Lakers because they're, because they're such a good rebounding team, and they're so quick, that outlet pass, if they get that first outlet pass, uh, they're very tough. Now, Philadelphia is one of the best teams in basketball, if not the best team, in getting back on defense. But these Lakers have so many guys that are exceptionally quick. 
Walter Mel, one of the avid Laker fans and pro basketball rooter here at the game. Norm Nixon said what really surprised him is how great Philadelphia is with their quickness on the transitional game. Pass and going for Bantam over his head, so another turnover. Brings the ball to Los Angeles territory. Clint Richardson pounding Magic Johnson. Michael Cooper, the other guard. He is 6'7". We have a 6'7", 6'9", guard situation. A big team in there for Los Angeles. Kareem is on the bench, and McAdoo's the center, and the pass intercepted by Julius Irving. And Magic Johnson takes it right back, but travels with it. Still Philadelphia ball. And the pace is quickening at both ends here, as we're seeing two of the great fast-break teams in action. And Julius, you see both of them, they generate their offense from turnovers. Julius already has four steals. Tony, good move on Cooper, banks it in. You know, Michael Cooper's a great defensive player, but a guy like Tony will really make you wonder about how good you are. A little more than two minutes gone by, second period, and a six-point Laker lead, and a Philadelphia foul called. It'll be their first team foul of this second period. We've been talking about McAdoo and Cooper. They are seven for eight from the field between them. They started off hitting 12 of their first 13 Sunday, so they are still in the groove in this game. Timeout. history of the NBA, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has had a sparkling playoff career, but so far in this game, he has not scored and has only three rebounds. Now, he claimed that the migraines that he suffered today were not bothering him, and we can't tell if they are now, but he's off to a slow start in that respect. He's off statistically to a slow start, but he set the pace for the team when they got out. The first play, the first three plays, he was involved when they got up six or nothing, and that was just to get him up and get him running. Inside Cooper from Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson has not missed in getting the ball in good shooting position for these L.A. shooters. And as a result, he has six assists, and they're shooting practically 70%. Cooper, one of the outstanding defensive players, is hounding Tony. That up to Julius Irving, 12 seconds on the shot clock. Bantam inside over Kurt Rambis. So Mike Bantam, who's had a shooting slump but had... 14 minutes, only two points and two rebounds on Sunday. He's had a few flashes in the playoffs. McAdoo charges in. McAdoo has eight. Leading scorer is Michael Cooper with 10. Dawkins has 10 points for Philadelphia. And so far, Darrell has picked up two fouls. Caldwell just one. Tony coming back for the baseline. He's so explosive, when he gets turned on, he can go for the rest of the game. And in big games, he's usually turned on. Got off to a slow start shooting, but it's four for nine right now. 8.45 remaining in the first half. Jamal Wilkes. And Bantam clears it. Gets it to Clint Richardson. Third guard with Lionel Hollins hurt. And a block by McAdoo and a follow-up by Julius Irving. It's amazing that McAdoo has so many blocked shots in this series. More than you normally expect. Well, people forget how good a defensive player he was as a young man. He was a, not only was he a great shooter and, and rebounder, but he was a good defensive player. He has two blocks today, and Rambis runs into Julius Irving. But the man who made that play for Philadelphia was Darrell Dawkins. Dawkins is playing a terrific game under control. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar comes back in the game, and Kurt Rambis will go out. Rambis has three personal fouls, and Rambis says, if I don't do it early, I'm not going to get my playing time to do it at all. Dixon coming back as Cooper goes out, leading scorer for L.A. with 10. And one thing I've noticed, the Lakers have not gotten the Philadelphia big man in foul trouble. No, they haven't. Caldwell Jones has one, Dawkins has two. Nixon penetrates, and easy layup. No one picked him up inside. Might have been Andrew Tony's assignment. Now Nixon guarding Andrew. Goes baseline, and a foul and a push before the shot. And the foul is on Norm Nixon. The Sixers have just one team foul here in the second period. That's the third on the Lakers, but more important for Norm Nixon, that's his third personal foul. So Rambis and Nixon, two starters, have three. There's only one player that can get the ball on court as fast as Norm Nixon, and that's probably Gus Williams of Seattle. And there's no other player that can get the ball up as quick. And it's hard to defense. You're trying to stop the ball, but with a guy like Norm Nixon, you're just trying to keep up. Jamal Wilkes fouls Andrew Tony, who will go to the line. Tony has been the top scorer the last three games with 36, 28, and 31 points on Sunday. He's also right behind Mo Cheeks, second and Nixon in assists. 
he has played, can't say deceptively because of his fine scoring games, but a, an outstanding all-round series. Uh, better than most people think. They think that all he does is shoot, but he plays better than adequate defense, and he's a good passer. The thing is that he's learning to do is to pick his passes better. 7.45 remaining in the first half. Sixers down by six. 7.40 to go. Knocked away by Julius. Still L.A. possession. Crowd looking for a foul, but get none. As Billy Cunningham, who played at North Carolina, and Pat Riley, who played at the University of Kentucky at 6-3, jumps center for Adolph Ruff. One of Ruff's runs, 66. Wilkes. Behind the back. McAdoo on the run. the boards if you're Philadelphia, but if you're the Lakers, you're taking advantage of a lot of opportunities, and it's 44 to 38 LA. Inside, Julius, can't stop that. Eight for Irving. Dick, one of the reasons the Lakers are so tough on the offensive boards is that they have so many guys that you need a double team that when you leave a guy to help out Put your hands. One, of the, one of the great shooters, that guy always goes to the boards. And a whistle and a foul away from the ball, and it'll be Philadelphia's second foul. Dawkins has his third personal foul, and that could start becoming a factor. Now, here's your foul there. Dawkins will go out. Caldwell Jones comes in. There's Darrell. He has played very well in this game with 10 points. Clint Richardson also sits down, and Bo Cheeks is back at guard. So, Cheeks and Tony are the guards. They're on defense right now. Wilkes to Kareem. I'd love to see Caldwell Jones pick up another personal, his second. But they'll take the two points. Kareem's first points of the ball game, and the Lakers are up by six. He's one for four from the field now. Cheeks loops it in the dock. Back to Cheeks. And Mo Cheeks hits from outside. When he's shooting the outside shot, when they go in and out with the doctor and then Cheeks. There's magic again. Kareem can't tip it in. Cooper missed a fine opportunity inside, but a loose ball foul has been called against Caldwell Jones, I believe. And for Caldwell Jones, that's his second personal foul. So if you're keeping score of the fouls on the centers, Caldwell Jones has two and Dawkins has three. Everybody in rebounds and assists so far, but he injured his hand, the knuckles on his shooting hand in Sunday's game. Originally, it was hurt against Phoenix, but he said it's going to be ready whether it wants to be or not. That's how he felt coming in. You know, on a plane coming back from Philadelphia, the last game I had a chance to talk with Magic. He really knows what he's doing out there. He's a really bright, uh, super smart ball player. Julia serving all over Jamal Wilkes. Oh! McAdoo. He pumped before he let that shot go. He pumped in the air. Bob McAdoo, who is used to 30-point games, is five for six from the field. He's a three-time NBA scoring king, but has been with his sixth team in the last six years with Los Angeles. Thrown away, Julius, and a foul by Mike Bannon. And they're going to make him have to shoot two free throws because they would have had a sure two points if they had, well, no free throws, but they, he saved some points in because they had a sure layup. Just under six minutes remaining in the first half. Bantam now has two fouls. Team foul story, four apiece here. And the Lakers, despite the fact that they're really outplaying Philadelphia, only have a six-point lead. Jamal Wilkes. Jamal Wilkes won a title with Golden State and the Rookie of the Year Award, both in the same year in 1975. Looking for his third championship, but Andrew Tony hits long range. And Tony, with only two points in the first period, now is the game-high scorer with 12. He's hit his last three, and he's hounding Jamal Wilkes. And Wilkes hits again. And maybe he's found that long-range shooting eye, finally. Six of nine for Jamal. Cheeks comes back, and Julius tries to tip it in. And Kareem, just bigger than anybody, holds on to it. Lakers by eight, the biggest lead ten. They can match that if they score. Jamal Wilkes, another one. Timeout, Philadelphia. Listen to him here. Laid back, no way. Matches 
the biggest lead of the game for the Lakers. at the coaches room with Kevin Lockery of the Hawks and Hubie Brown of the Knicks and also live at halftime from Las Vegas Jerry Cooney and Larry Holmes coming up but Jamal Wilkes has emerged in this game he's the high scorer with 15 points he has hit five of his last six and while he has not been a prolific scorer as far as his outside shots are concerned coming into this game he has been the leading offensive rebounder in the series Bill he's just a great player that as it, it is it's necessary, he finds it necessary, he brings out different skills. He finds a way to get the ball in the hoop. All right, Philadelphia trailing by 10. You see the trap. Andrew Tony from the corner makes it an eight-point game. Very important that Philadelphia narrows the edge and doesn't move up to an 18-point L.A. lead from their standpoint. And here's a steal by Maurice Cheeks, one of the leaders in the league. Cheeks. Wow. And it's Bob McAdoo. A two-shot foul. The fifth team foul on the Lakers. So they're in the penalty with 4.29 to go in the half. That's what you call a good foul, where a guy gets back on defense and a guy's going to lay up and he's in a good position there and he gives a block and takes a chance on hitting the guy. But that's a good foul. You know, Mo Cheeks is reminding more and more of Tiny Archibald. He is not afraid to, to bang heads with the big guys inside and penetrate. Yeah, he thinks the big guys are in the wrong place. You know, he's a junk food freak, Maurice Cheeks. You know, a lot of people eat the right... He loves chocolate chip cookies. That's all he cares about. He says, if I ever get married, my wife's going to have to be able to cook two things, pancakes and chocolate chip cookies. It's worked for him. Can't argue with success. Maybe he's cooking his own. You know one thing, if he's cooking, the Sixers are in good shape. Lakers by six, 420 to go in the half. This is a Philadelphia trap defense. Wilkes wide open. He's been hot. This is the shot. McAdoo on the offensive board. 12 for McAdoo. Wilkes has 15, and Cooper has 10. Andrew Tony has 14 for the Sixers, and Dawkins has 10. And Andrew's 12 points have come all in this period. And both teams have gotten great service so far from their benches. Loop it into Julius. And it's foul. Kareem tried to front him and just missed getting a piece of that ball. But Bob McAdoo has committed another personal foul, and that's his third. So that could be critical for Los Angeles. Three on McAdoo. Yes, because uh, they need his outside shooting, because if he's not hitting and Jamal's not hitting, then they, their game completely changes because they have to go, really have to go inside to that and play the Philadelphia defense hand because they trap, love the trap and double team a guy like Kareem. Julius has had trouble shooting from the line this entire series. 70%. But he's been better than that most of the time. It's one of two for nine points. And the Lakers are up by seven with 3.50 to go in the first half. L.A. scored the first nine points of the game. Their biggest margin was 10. Philadelphia has not had a lead. And an illegal defense has been called. Illegal defense called against Philadelphia. I think it was Bobby Jones. I'm not sure. I think what? it was Bobby Jones. Man in the middle. As they move the ball around, they, both these coaches love to run and play the test and see if the guys are playing this illegal defense. And of course, they know they are. Been a big story in this series. They try to cheat Gamble on Kareem. If you miss, that's what happens. You know what's so important about the way Kareem is playing is that he had such great intensity tonight. And when he when he plays that way, it just the other players just get get it oh. motions almost. Bobby Jones, tremendous hustle, keeps it alive. And a new clock, 20 seconds. Cheeks penetrated to the dock, and that was Maurice Cheeks, who brought a lot of gold shirts around him and fouled Julius Irving. Seven-point Laker lead, winding down to three minutes to go in the first half. The coach's room. Holmes and Cooney coming up at halftime, and a Laker turnover gives the ball back to Philadelphia. Direct! Free direct! Bobby, I think here. that right now the Sixers have to be pleased that they're down by only seven considering the way this game is gone. Loop it in to Julius in the crowd. Not a foul. The ball is tipped away by Kareem and McAdoo handling it. Bobby Jones has a trap. Now that's something the guy 6'10 <laughs> past the guy 7'2. Kareem on the follow up after Wilkes has missed. Six for Kareem, nine-point game. But the Sixers can't let the final two and a half minutes get away from them. They're trailing by nine points. It's a stay in range. Kareem's cheeks missing. Kareem over to McAdoo to 
Johnson. He's got Wilkes inside and Cooper Trent. Cooper. Biggest lead of the game right now for L.A. And Magic Johnson, the principal reason why. He has this strong 10 assists in this game. The fast break points remind you of a lot of games three and four. Tony penetrating. And Andrew Tony with 16 points, 14 this period. And if it's up to Andrew Tony, they won't let it get too far away. Now the Sixers have to be very careful because the Lakers are very explosive. Very explosive. They get into a thing where they play such great defense and then they score off of it. So the Sixers have to be careful this last minute and a half to make sure that they get a good shot down every time down. Magic was all alone inside and Julius knocked the ball away. Kareem missed Magic inside. A four on one break and Julius Irving on the other side. You see, both these teams love to break, but Philadelphia needs the steal to do it and they got it right there. Because they're not a good rebounding team, they have to get their fair pass makes generate off their good defense and the steals and turnovers. 114 to go in the first half. It's 62 to 55 in favor of Los Angeles. Coming up at halftime, as we told you, from Las Vegas. The two contenders for the heavyweight championship. And there is John Madden, who will never get into a ring with Jerry Cooney, although it looks like John can more than hold his own. Jerry Cooney, the challenger. Larry Holmes, the champion. And you'll see them and hear from both of them live at halftime, as Brent Musburger will also take over and talk with the coaches in the coaches' room, Hubie Brown and Kevin Lockery. You think John Madden will get excited? Yeah, he's always excited. I'll tell you, his, his arms are always flailing, John. I wonder if, what would happen if he had to put his hands in his pocket while he, he talked. Could, he couldn't talk. He wouldn't talk. 112 to go in the half. Lakers shooting 76% this period and 71% from the half. Yet their lead is only seven points. Philadelphia can't get in the way. As you said, Bill, L.A. is so explosive. Four seconds on the shot clock. Three seconds. And a foul. With one second on the 24-second clock, a foul. Mark Landsberger, number 54, has entered the ball game. Bobby Jones picks up the third, but there's Landsberger, who is one of the better rebounders per minute played, and he played a very key role in the Lakers' championship over these Sixers two years ago. Magic shooting. He and Kurt Rambis have the same type of skill. They're, they're good rebounders, and they're, they're pretty good around the basket. But playing with this group, they don't need to be great outside shooters. They, they really helps these other guys because they're good offensive rebounders, both of them. Both teams in the penalty. Less than a minute to go. You watch the clock. Nine-point lead. And a steal by Johnson to Wills. Blocked by Caldwell. Jones and Landsberger keeps it alive. 45 to go in the half. 15 to go on the shot clock. And Landsberger got free, and it's blocked by Julius. Here comes Philadelphia. Lakers are back on the D. Andrew Tony flips the cheeks. What a pass by Tony. That's one of the skills that people forget that Andrew Tony has. He threw the defense, he made him commit, and then he made a nice, easy pass. And that's the hardest pass to make is to make it so a guy can handle it when you're going that fast. 16 on the shot clock, so there's a seven-second differential between the 24-second clock. Cooper, that pass inside to Jamal Wills. L.A. is still beating Philadelphia much too much inside. So that's a credit to the Lakers. They're playing five ball as their lead is nine. Philadelphia trying to get the final points of the half. Four seconds to go. Three. Both cheeks have the shot blocked as the half ends. They like it in L.A. What do you think? Spirited Laker team leads the court along with the Sixers. We are halfway through this game six. And Los Angeles, which has had the lead since the very start, in front 66 to 57. Well, Russell, if you ever use your hands like John Madden in front of me, no one's ever going to see my face. I'll tell you that because they're so big. Anyway, let's talk about this game. And a good point brought up by Brent as far as Bob McAdoo, when we get down to MVP time toward the end of the game, every one of the Lakers, with the exception of Mark Landsberger, is shooting 50% or more. And, of course, McAdoo and Cooper killing him 12 of 15 from the field. And you can't win giving up 66 points. And so aggressiveness on defense has to be important for Philadelphia. I think. Yes, uh, Philadelphia is going to have to get a, another good half out of Daryl Dawkins and Maurice Cheeks. I think those are going to be the two key guys for Philadelphia's second half. And you know that Norm Nixon will be heard from in the second half because he's a guy that 
makes the Lakers so explosive. He announced it. Now, the Sixers have to be very careful starting this third period because if they let the Lakers make a run like it did to start the game, it may be out of reach. Do they have to close in immediately now? Can they hold in to the 11 to 15, nine-point radius now, or do they really have to make a move at the beginning of this third? It's important that they play even the first three or four minutes of the second half. Just play even. They don't have to pick up, but they at least shouldn't drop any more than four points more behind than they are now. Taking a look at the halftime statistics, a big shooting edge in favor of Los Angeles and a rebounding edge to 25-16. Magic Johnson has eight rebounds to lead everyone. Caldwell Jones is five, leads Philadelphia, but they've given up 30 and 36 points, and that says enough. The top scorers in the ball game, Andrew Toney with 14 of his 16 points in the second period. Pretty good balance there. Dawkins has three fouls, but he has 10 points in the ball game. Maurice Cheeks got hot, has 10. For Los Angeles, they too have balance scoring led by Jamal Wilkes who has found the outside touch with 17. Anyway, set for third period action. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell and the Lakers can win the championship if they hold their lead in the final two periods. Julia Serving. First shot goes. In the three games of the forum, the Lakers have led at the half by 12-15 and tonight by nine points. Remember, Philadelphia had the 81 to set a playoff record in the second half Sunday. Lakers by seven. Half-court game. Rambis is going inside against Bobby Jones and gets it out quickly in a three-second violation called against Kurt Rambis. So Philadelphia has a chance to get back. Topsy-turvy series. We've yet to see which team has what it takes close down to the wire. Against Magic, Julius is foul, and it's a two-shot foul. Magic Johnson has his third personal foul. Those in foul trouble, if you want to call three in that category, Nixon, Magic Johnson, and Rambus have three. For the Sixers, Bobby Jones and Dawkins have three. Uh, some of those fouls will, will be important because what the coaches will be able to do, especially in the seven Sixers, they are a great one-on-one -on -one team, and they can go after guys that have foul trouble. L.A. scored the first nine points of the game. Biggest margin was 11, and the closest the Sixers got was four points at 46-42. Right now, they're down by five. North Nixon to Jamal Wills. Red hot in the first half. Still shooting the eyes out of the bucket in the second half. He has 19 points now. Nine of 15 for Jamal. So he's on the beam. Tony trying to get inside on Wills. Julius trying to look for him. Denied the ball, Wilson the ball, and Tony steals it right back against Kareem. Thought the better of it wisely. And Julius changes hands. What a play against Kareem. Amazing. And Julius is making sure that the Sixers get off to that good start, which was so important for him to do. Five-point lead. Julius gambles and tries for the steal. Jamal Wills to Rambis. Bobby Jones is playing inside the free throw line against Kirk. Wilkes will take the shot. And Bobby Jones down court is Julius. Tips it in. Going backward. Two incredible plays by Julius Irving, the team leader, who has held three team meetings and the club has responded each time. And the doctor has 21 points and is the high score in the ball game. Kareem inside against Caldwell Jones, but picked up by Nixon, who hits the shot right in the key. Only six for Nixon, but Julius Irving has all eight Philadelphia points here in the third. 70-65, the Lakers lead. Two minutes and 15 seconds gone by in the third period. Bobby Jones hasn't found the shooting eye. Caldwell Jones tries to keep it going. L.A. ball. So Philadelphia has come out strong in this third period, Bill. This is what they're going to have to do. Now, they have to maintain it for a few more minutes, and then they'll be in the rhythm of the game. Hey, Julia says, I'm going to let it all hang out in the second half. Lionel Holland said he was so pumped up he was tight, thought he could do it all. But he scored all eight of the Sixers' points, and following the back-to-back -back steals, watch Julius here. For Julius Irving, the spectacular is routine. He is a magician. There's no question about it. Julius Irving took charge against the Celtics in Game 7, one of the most articulate, 
and public, great public servants in basketball. He rarely turns anyone down for charity. He is truly a great sportsman in any sport. And a lot of people, including the Celtics, said, I hope he gets that NBA championship ring that he's wanted so much. 9.15 to go. Sixers trying to play the tight defense here. It's so far effective. Norm Nixon misses the shot. Bobby Jones gets it to Cheeks. What Nixon wants to do is try to stall Cheeks so he can't get going. He couldn't do it there, and the foul is drawn inside. Good play by Moe because he was stalled in the backcourt by Nixon. And what Maurice Cheeks does for that team, when he picks it up and goes to the basket, he'll make the defense conscious of him, and then he makes great passes. So they can, And that's when they make those good outside shots. Kareem, second personal, and the second team foul on the Lakers. And Maurice Cheeks on the line. He was the MVP of the Missouri Valley Conference three straight years. Only Oscar Robertson, other than Maurice, could make that claim. Love responds when Mo has it going for him. Four-point Laker lead. That's the closest the Sixers have come since 46 to 42. Out to Jamal Wilkes. Under nine minutes to play. And a foul on Caldwell Jones, and that'll be number three. So the two Philadelphia centers, Caldwell Jones and Dawkins, each have three. And if they get uh, a couple more between them, then it starts to take effect on the on Billy Cunningham's substitution pattern. Johnson working against Tony. Jamal Wilkes, line drive shot, and Cheeks is there. And Bobby Jones, his teammate, banged into him, and it was off the Sixers. So the Lakers maintain possession. The guy that's outside on a play like that, he should tell the big guy, you take it or I got it. You should always know who's next to you. Nixon in the lane, one-hander. Norm Nixon only had four points at the hand. He's averaged 18 in this series. He has eight points now, eight and a half minutes to go in the third. Nixon picking up cheeks. They go to the dock. The dock against Magic Johnson. Rand is helping out. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Working against Johnson, Tony. Open man is Cheeks, and Mo hits the smooth jumper. And that's when the Sixers are so effective outside shooters, when they move their ball in and out. Nixon, Cheeks on him, and Mo comes back. And Bobby Jones gets it out to the dock, and Nixon takes it away from him. Norm Nixon, Ali York to Jamal Wilkes off his hands, Philadelphia ball. What incredible pacing. And these two coaches have done a tremendous job with these teams to get them to the finals. There are 21 other clubs watching on television. Wish they were here in the championship round. 7.50 in the third. Tony, an illegal defense called against Kurt Rambis, and that will be a shooting situation. It is the second time, let's see, as Philadelphia was called once. See if we can see where there he is uh, in the lane. Kurt Rambis, there by himself. No All right, Got a little lonesome. It was the first warning. All right, no shooting. It was a, so each team has had a warning on the zone defense. And next they'll have to shoot the technical foul. Julia Serving has 21 points, five rebounds, three assists, five steals. And Jamal Wilkes got his hand on that one. Lakers ball, leading by four. 7.35 to go third period. Wilkes, Johnson alive. Into Rambin, blocked by Caldwell Jones. Two on two, Magic gets back, and Cheeks pulls up with it. And Julia Serving kicks it again. Julia, basket, no basket, it falls out, but he'll go to the line. And the chance for the Sixers to come within two points. And the personal foul against Los Angeles. Now here's the shot by Cheeks, which is a good shot. He's tempted to foul on like he should have. Julia's tipped it up a little strong. He's up there on the other side, and then again. And there he's fouled again, and just can't get it to go for him. And for Norm Nixon, his fourth personal foul. And the third team foul on the Lakers. Philadelphia has one. And Julius can bring him to within two. Bob McAdoo. Five, six clubs in six years for McAdoo. A vagabond who gained a bad reputation because of injuries and a high salary has meant so much. And that's true. You can bank on that one. This is such an unpredictable and bizarre series that nothing surprises anyone. Three-point Laker lead. That's the closest Philadelphia has been since the first period. Seven minutes. And Wilkes hits. 
21 for Jamal Wilkes. He's the high scorer for L.A. That was the important thing that Kareem did in passing the ball back to Jamal to make him take that shot to regain his confidence because it's important that they have good outside shooting. Tony hits outside. What a game we have. The sixth game out of desperation game again for Philadelphia. And how well the Sixers have played with their backs to the wall. But the Lakers have been so confident looking to wrap up another world championship. It would be their second in three years. Wilkes looking for Kareem. Caldwell Jones has three fouls. Keep it in mind. Kareem gets the points. Eight points for Abdul Jabbar. And a five-point lead. And he does that. That particular move, he does that so that the next time, maybe... They'll allow the sky hook. And that's the shot he wants, is the sky hook, but he takes that to make you conscious of he can do being able to do other things. That was a 20-second timeout called for by Philadelphia. And there's the move right inside, right there. Nice soft touch. One of the best things that happened to Kareem was in college they had the no dunk rule. Because he learned to be a good shooter around the basket. Come on, baby. Because most guys inside, if they didn't have that, they would dunk and dunk and dunk. And here, they wouldn't be able to make those little shots like that because they wouldn't have had the chance to practice it. Dramatic story. The Junior Featherweight Championship WBA style Sergio Palma from Argentina with his country at war says he's fighting this fight for his country as well as for himself against Leo Cruz from the Dominican Republic in a big boxing day because we will also have a report on the Holmes Cooney fight from the previous night in Las Vegas. All coming up on CBS Sports Saturday. Five-point Laker lead. Philadelphia has not had the lead in the game. Closest the Sixers have come, 74 to 71. They have 618 to go in the third. Magic Johnson is on both cheeks. There comes the trap. Tony shooting from the corner. He's hit seven in a row. Andrew Tony with 20 points in the game. So it's Irving and Tony with 22 and 20 respectively. Tony's one of the few guys that can shoot that outside shot all game and be just as effective the last quarter as he was the first quarter, maybe more so, in fact. Philadelphia's two big guns are hot. They're basically a team without a tremendous firepower other than those two. Kareem, sky hook from the middle. Magic oh. wants to fight for it, and Bobby Jones, after Doc kept it alive, four on two break. Cheeks to Bobby Jones. Cooper inside. Kareem was intimidating inside, and Bobby Jones hits the shot. And a one-point lead for the Lakers, the closest that the Philadelphia 76ers have come since the opening moments of the game, and the crowd urges on L.A. McAdoo watches jump shot, but first a foul, and the second team foul against Philadelphia called right here with 5.14 to go in the third period. Foul is on Bobby Jones. He has four. So Bobby Jones and Norm Nixon are the players in the game with four personal fouls. Magic goes to Jamal Wilkes. He's had the hot hand. Kareem double teamed by Tony and Caldwell Jones. And the foul against Andrew Tony. And that will be Andrew's third. And the third team foul against Philadelphia. And Daryl Dawkins comes in. And they need a big game, big second half from him if they're going to stay in this ball game. He had 20 points, seven rebounds, and three block shots on Sunday. All his points in the second and third quarter. Five minutes remaining, third period. Jamal Williams. And the rebound cheeks. Here come the break. And the loop pass to Irving. Julius against Cooper. Blocked by McAdoo. It was McAdoo. A three on two, Wilkes to Kareem. And that exchange hurt Philadelphia. That's a four point swing from a dunk shot to two points to the other end. That hurts. Bob McAdoo, three block shots. They loop it into Julius, and Irving goes up. Blocked again, this time by Kareem. Three point Laker lead. Michael Cooper hot the last two games, and Caldwell Jones, who said, I have to own the defensive glass, goes high for him. Incredible pace and action here. You're watching championship basketball at its best with a professional double team talking. And they tie him up and jump off. Now here's the block shot with uh, Julius has the ball, takes a shot, and there comes McAdoo. And both these teams are playing with great intensity. 
but it manifests itself on the defense. Because if you make one false step offensively, the defense has the ball and going the other way. Kareem has five of those ten block shots by the Lakers. Mike Bantam, number 42, is in there now. The nine-year from St. Joe's acquired from Indiana when Dawkins went down with a broken shin bone in January. The tip controlled by L.A. and Magic Johnson. The pinwheel. He's the hub of this ball club. To Jamal Wilkes, who's found the shooting eye. And McAdoo off the bench. Knocked away. Turnover. Philadelphia picks it up. 3.45 showing on the clock of the third. Three-point Laker lead. Philadelphia has played the desperation games to success so far in the playoffs. How many times can they go to the well? Tony tries to get it inside, and it's out of bounds. Philadelphia ball. They have eight seconds on the clock. Billy C., who turned 39 last Thursday, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, hampered with migraine headaches, and now his mouth is bleeding from a shot. Tony is trapped, and Maurice Cheeks from the corner just gets it off at the 24-second clock, but Philadelphia has a new one to work with. Look at Darryl. 19 to go Darryl. in the third period. Tony misses a two-pointer for way out, and Wilkes clear. And the Lakers are not running so well at this point. L.A. led by four at the quarter and nine at the half. Caldwell Jones asserting himself more and more on the defensive boards. Four on two break. Cheeks goes up without the ball. And here comes Magic. Caldwell Jones back. And McAdoo. Block shot by Caldwell Jones. Against McAdoo. And turnabout, I guess, is fair play with those two. Tony misses the bank shot tipped up by Phantom. And you're looking at two young coaches who badly want a title. Billy has done everything win a title as a coach, and Pat Riley, who took over for Paul Westhead once. Now here's a block check by McAdoo coming in, and here goes Caldwell Jones right there. Tremendous and play. And Mike Bantam got the rebound and got it up the court. One point lead for the Lakers. They have the ball. 2.20 to go in the third period. Each team with three team fouls, and a foul called away from the ball, and it's on Mike Bantam. Fourth team foul on Philadelphia, and for Bantam, his third person. And we'll have a timeout. What pace we have, but what do you expect in a game six that could be the last game of the year? With, with these teams especially, because no team is going to back off, not at this point. Russell here at the Forum. This is the closest Philadelphia has gotten. They have not had the lead, and our statistician Marty Aronoff reminds us that the Sixers have not had the lead at any time in this building in this series, this being the third game. With 2.17 remaining in the third period, let's bring you up to date on who's in there. For the Lakers, they have Michael Cooper, number 21, Jamal Wilkes, 52 at the line, Magic Johnson, 32, Bob McAdoo, 11, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 33. So Cooper is playing the guard spot with Magic Johnson. Wilkes hits the first one. Bantam, 42 for Philadelphia. Caldwell Jones, number 11, the center. And number 53, Daryl Dawkins up front. They have the big team in there. Mo Cheeks, number 10. Andrew Tony, 22 to guard. Two free throws, a three-point lead again. Johnson with some pressure. Cheeks across the line. All the nervousness and all the tightness is long gone here. These clubs know what this game means. Cheeks inside to Bantam. One-point game again. Well executed, as, you, as we've seen before in the same play. Murray Cheeks is aggressive, going to, the, in, going to the middle, going to the basket. They shoot so much better. And Bantam is three for three from the field. He's playing with three fouls. Less than two minutes remaining. 149 to be precise. Cooper in trouble, double team. And a three-second violation has been called against Magic Johnson. Philadelphia ball, and the Sixers can take the lead with 147 in the third. They've been trailing all the way. The Lakers scored the first nine points of this game. Bantam has lost one of his contact lenses. CJ! Well, in this kind of game, we'll just Over have to there. play one. Three direct. You have to make sacrifices, Russ. Is that what he's about, Dick? I don't know. You tell me. Steal by Michael Cooper and Magic Johnson. Understandable that the fuses are 
just short in this ball game. The Lakers trying to wrap it up. See if we can see what happened here. Here's Magic going up, and there's McAdoo giving Bantam, and Bantam giving it back. Pat Riley and Billy Cunningham, both coaches are on the floor. Riley with McAdoo at about center court, and Cunningham. Peace has been restored and talking to Bantam on the sidelines. You know, for Philadelphia, they have played seven more playoff games than the Lakers, who have been incredible. They swept Phoenix to the Lakers. They swept San Antonio and lead 3-2 in this play here. There. Magic Johnson, shooting And they call the foul on Caldwell Jones, his fourth. And so the extracurricular activities uh, will not play a part. They just tell the guys, all right, guys, cool off. Bobby Jones and Caldwell Jones have four for Philadelphia, Nixon four for L.A. And that's the thing the referee should do. Is just, if you can't avoid calling taking a foreign guy out of the game, they should do that because you don't want to let a game be decided by something like that. Lakers by three, so Philadelphia had a chance to take the lead and didn't. And now it's a three-point game again with 1.20 to go in this third period. Six-game NBA World Championship on CBS Sports. Dawkins traveling. No basket, traveling call. Darrell has scored ten points all in the first half. Sixers have turned the ball over seven times this period. Dr. J coming back in. They need the stability of Irving, who has 22 points. Tony has 20. Top scores for Philadelphia. Jamal Wilkes is 23, and Caldwell Jones out with four fouls. And one of the key men, the real key men to the Philadelphia ball club. They're going to need the rebounding now from Dawkins and Bantam more than ever. Cooper looking inside to Kareem. Stolen away by Bantam. Big defensive play with a re-steal by Cooper. Join Caldwell Jones and Bobby Jones with four personal. And that can be crucial because there's a lot of time left. Almost 13 minutes left to play. And that can be very important going down the stretch. With those guys involved, that means they have to play a little different. And pressure by the guards for Los Angeles. Mo Cheeks brings it across. You watch the clock. He has 19 on the shot clock. Five-point Laker lead. Philadelphia had it down the wall. Against Cooper, picked up by Magic, and Maurice Cheeks. This is Bantam, tries to tip it in. Johnson. Blows it down with 25 seconds now, remaining in the third. Crowd on its feet. It was a nine-point Laker lead at the half. Gives him a seven-point lead. We got six seconds to go. Five seconds. Tony goes up with a shot. No, and a foul. We have a foul. Despite the block shot. And Andrew Tony will go to the line as Jamal Wilkes has been hit with his third foul. They call the foul before the shot. All right, no shooting foul. So now one second remains for Philadelphia here in this period. Turned out to be a pretty good foul. I, I'd say. Tony with one second to go to the dock. Three-point attempt. No. Well, Philadelphia came within one, but L.A. reeled off six in a row. And the story of the three periods is a seven-point lead. And the NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. 
Packers are on a roll at the worst time as far as Philly's concerned. 86-79, having run off six straight points to take a seven-point lead. But Philadelphia, with the foul trouble, now has Caldwell Jones on the bench. When he was in there, Philadelphia played their best because he keyed the team with the defensive glass. Yeah, he's very important. Two guys that are sung on that team, Maurice Cheeks and Caldwell Jones. Caldwell Jones does a great job defensively and getting the boards. And he's a good passer and he's a pretty good outside shooter. Now, Cheeks has been doing his thing the second half. He's been going in, getting down. That's how Philadelphia got back in the game. But you know, you always tend to forget the doctor. He's done so many things. He's done it so well that you forget just how great he is. And he's going to have to have a big fourth quarter if they're going to win the game. We have seen him take matters in his own hands. He's going to have to do it here on the enemy court. This is the most enthusiastic I have ever seen a forum crowd. They enjoy their basketball, but they're kind of relaxed enjoying it. Not tonight. They want their Lakers to capture a title. The last team to win it at home was Portland in 1977. And Cooper stepped on the line, turning it over to Philadelphia. Start of the fourth period, 12 minutes to go in this final period. Dick Stockton and Bill Russell reporting from the forum in Inglewood. And Andrew Tony, clutch as he's been all year, hits the jumper. 22 points for Andrew. Clint Richardson in the game for defense first, he said, and then possibly to create opportunities on Johnson. They're looking inside. Kareem guarded and tied up pretty well by Dawkins. to remind most of our viewers that you will be seeing the local news following the game and those viewers on the west coast will be seeing universe a fine program with walter cronkite now kareem should be able to beat the double team and overpower caldwell jones on the inside going down a stretch especially since he's got four fouls For the Lakers, that's what they had coming into this final period. The trap. Tony to the dot. Julius trying to thread the middle, and it was knocked away by Max. Nixon coming right back. And it's a nine-point game. Walter Matthau loves it. I don't know about that young girl. <laughs> Tony, Kareem standing in the middle. They get it over to Julius Irving. This is that tough trap that Philadelphia has had difficulty with throughout the series. But Andrew Tony challenges him. He challenged everybody on that, McAdoo and Kareem. Is it in your face, large people? <laughs> 11 for 18 for Andrew Tony. Inside of Kareem. Rambis will come back, and we'll have a foul. He must be having a lot of fun. Is it, is it tougher to play these things or to broadcast these things? Much tougher to play, I want to tell you. But I'm, this is great basketball. I'm just having a good time, I can tell you that. Four fouls on Andrew Tony. Kurt Rambis, who picked up three fouls early and scored six points in the first period of hand for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Fourteen for Kareem, seven rebounds and five block shots. Not bad for a guy that missed the workout today with severe migraines. And I guess that's a redundancy because migraines are severe. Played the entire third period, North Nixon. It's a nine-point lead again. Biggest lead of the game for L.A. was 11. And Billy Cunningham wants a timeout. Philadelphia can't solve this one. They're in trouble with the trap. And Tony bounced it off of one of the Lakers' legs. So they, can, so they can retain control. So he was definitely trapped. These teams are not friendly. Not anymore. They may have started out that way, but the longer you go, the more the little animosity build up. You're looking at Bob McAdoo, who's done everything but win a world title. He's 10 minutes and 13 seconds away from one right now. Minneapolis to Los Angeles. They have been in 10 world championship finals before this year, winning two against the Knicks in Philadelphia. 
Of course, the 69 lost. The balloons stayed on top. They didn't have balloons tonight. They won't need them, will they? And they gave the uh, champagne another year to age. They'll celebrate here even without the balloons if the Lakers hold on. Julius Irving has missed his last six shots from the field. He's going to have to correct that. He is so important to this team. Rebound, McAdoo. Magic Johnson. Nine-point lead, two minutes gone by. And the Lakers have matched the biggest lead of the game. And this is the quick team that the Lakers have that's so devastating on a fast break. Cooper fouls Andrew Tony, and that'll be the first team foul on the Lakers. We have a lot of time to go. Nine minutes and 50 seconds, as you see on the clock. But L.A., after having their lead shaved to a single point, have upped it again to 11. Tony looking for help. Clint Richardson. Philadelphia. Off balance shot by Clint goes. Clint Richardson, who's had some clutch games and a turnover, brings it back to Philadelphia. So that's the last thing Pat Riley wanted. But on a good fast breaking team, you will throw the ball away a, lot, a few times because you have to try that. Because if you don't try it, your guys won't run for you. Tony makes the move in, double team, and look at the move he made. Randis the rebound, but he made a good move, knifing in. Not to do it out of the field. against Kurt Rambis. Maurice Cheeks in the game, giving Andrew Tony a rest. All Tony has done is 24. An incredible game. He goes out with four fouls. And Bo Cheeks in the backcourt with Clint Richardson now, but Julius Irving handles it outside. Over Rambis. And Doc finally breaks the drought. He has 24 points. He and Tony, same totals. Two up inside. Nine point Two lead, 840 to go. We'll either have a game seven on Thursday or the Lakers will win the world championship tonight. And they're leading with nearly eight and a half to go. Nakadu, air ball, and Caldwell Jones, who's playing with four fouls, has the rebound. Dawkins on the bench with five. Bobby Jones also has four. Mo Cheeks wide open. And Julius Irving couldn't keep it going in L.A. Right back. Nixon. Norm Nixon, his best season ever. Over 500 assists for the fifth straight year. Michael Cooper. The bench is doing it for Pat Riley now. Four minutes gone by. Fourth period. Eleven point lead. And the dock makes it nine again. But trading baskets won't do it for Philadelphia now in the fourth period. They're going to have to clamp down on the Lakers. And the Lakers are executing their half-court pretty defense pretty well. And they're getting some good outside shooting. No. But that'll have to continue. McAdoo. And there's something that you always talk about but rarely see and maybe never see in the championship finals. They're going to jump it up. Kareem is coming back in. And so is Daryl Dawkins. So Dawkins will come back with five personal fouls. And Kareem, go, go. who has done it with 14 points and rebounds and block shots. Five all-round game. Jamal Wilkes will come in. And Cooper, so they give it, hopefully he'll have his shooting touch and have it outside shooting. Because the Lakers, the way the, de the, the section defense is going, they'll have to have outside shooting. Kareem will be coming in for McAdoo, but McAdoo is going to jump center. Both Bob and Cooper went to the bench are each 8 for 12 shooting-wise. Controlled by L.A. Wilkes. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go. Magic Johnson has the triple-double. That's double figures in points, rebounds, and assists in this game. 11 points, 10 rebounds, and 12 assists for Johnson. He had 18 of those triple-doubles during the regular year. Nixon. And the Lakers are gaining more and more confidence. They continue to come back and match Philadelphia hoop for hoop. And the clock is running against Philly. Foul against the Lakers, their 13th foul. Kareem and Dawkins come back in. And a timeout. There's Darrell. Rambis 
Dallas has five fouls in a timeout. It may be coming up to now or never time for Philadelphia. Yes, and they're going to need something out of Dale Dawkins. And you never can tell what it's going to be, though. Last year, Cedric Maxwell was the MVP of the playoffs. Magic Johnson won it the year before. Kareem, then known as Lou Alcindor, won it in 1971 with the Milwaukee. Who will win it this time? And if the Lakers go on to win, they have a bunch of candidates. It could be Magic Johnson, it could be Kareem, or maybe that man, Bob McAdoo, who came over from New Jersey on Christmas Eve. And Pat Riley said, I knew enough about my club that I knew that McAdoo would not be a disruptive force, as people had accused him of in the past. But you know, you know McAdoo, you've talked to him in the past. What were the problems with him? Well, he was a great player and he wanted to win. And when he, he did what he thought the coaches wanted him to do. Which was and score. We, and when he was in Buffalo, they said score, score, score. And so he got in the habit of doing that. And you have to have a special kind of psyche to be a scorer because you have to shoot even when it's not working. And so, so people start saying you're shot hungry and, and shot happy and things like that. And, and if you're not winning, then they really... They blame you. There's nothing as bad in, I guess, basketball or life as a bad, rap bad reputation that you have to live down. It's very tough to do it. Six minutes and 49 seconds to go in a steal by Maurice Cheeks. And Cheeks, a tremendous steal, and it's a seven-point Laker lead with 6.40 to go. Now, if Philadelphia wins this game, we don't even talk about MVP, do we? We go to a seventh game Thursday night. Nixon working against Clint Richardson and help, Rambis. Help. Kareem is in the game with Magic Johnson and Wilkes and Norm Nixon. So they didn't block out. Simple as that. And Kurt Rambis got an easy bucket. The Lakers are playing superb basketball. They have fought off every threat by Philadelphia, including the big one. And Clint Richardson will go to the line. Team fouls right now. Four on the Lakers and two on Philadelphia. Now here's the shot to Norm Nixon. Takes the shot, bounces away, and there comes Kurt Rams. Well, they didn't block him out. You got to do that. So Clint Richardson is on the line. Personal foul was on Jamal Wilkes' fourth. And both these teams come back right away. George Allen, great football coach. And you've seen him in the past as CBS football commentator. Eight-point lead. Winding down now to the halfway mark. In this fourth period, Kareem and a loose ball foul against Darryl Dawkins. And that may be it for him. That is it for him. And Darryl Dawkins is fouled out of the game to the delight of the crowd. He scored six, 10 points, and he fouls out with six minutes exactly remaining. And Caldwell Jones, who is playing with four fouls, replaces him. Kareem inside, out to Nixon, their two-man game. Doesn't work there, but Kareem keeps it going, and a foul by Caldwell Jones, and that's his pick. And this drastically changes the Philadelphia setup. Clint Richardson goes out, and Billy Cunningham's going to need some ammunition. And Andrew Tony is the man for it. Tony comes in with 24 points. Second to Julius is 28. Leading scorer for Los Angeles is Jamal Wilkes with 23. And six players in double figures for the Lakers. Kareem misses. Four for seven before this shot from the free throw. Five for eight. Nine-point lead. Sixers coming up. They've got Cheeks and Tony in the backcourt. Knocked away by Magic. And the foul call on Johnson. And that'll be the 15th foul on L.A. And there is a penalty at Johnson's fourth foul. And Pat Riley, who lost in the 1966 NCAA championship game to Texas Western. This team lost, Kentucky did. Was an assistant coach to Paul Westhead two years ago when the Lakers won the world title over these Sixers. Trying to win it as a head coach. Bobby Jones. 
with four points and seven rebounds. Now five points in the ballgame. Well below his playoff average. Seven-point Laker lead. Plenty of time. 5.35 on the clock. But keep in mind that Caldwell Jones is playing with five fouls. And the Sixers have the trap in the corner. Darrell Dawkins is fouled out. And a turnover by L.A. And Philadelphia had to cut it to five now. They have extraordinarily fashion come back from back-to-the-wall situations repeatedly in these playoffs. Tony against Jamal Wilkes. And it drops for him. Tony with 26 points. He wasn't a starter this year, but you can bet he'll be in the starting backcourt next year. How can you keep him out of there? 12 for 20 shooting, and the Lakers' lead is cut to five. And all of a sudden, it gets a little quiet here at the Forum. As it should. Philadelphia's last run. They were down by 11, and now have cut it to five. The important timeout story, L.A. has three, Philadelphia three, but the Lakers also have a 20-second timeout at their behest. 5-12 remaining, fourth period. The Lakers are already over the penalty with five team fouls. Sixers have four. But Dawkins is fouled out for Philadelphia, and Caldwell Jones is playing with five. You're looking at the Philadelphia trap. Five-point game. Sixer team based on defense. Team that's played better than people anticipated all year. Wilkes. Tony. And it's kept alive. It's going to be Philadelphia ball, and they used all 24 seconds. Big game for Pat Riley. He doesn't want to go back to Philly for game seven Thursday. Cunningham, that's all he wants. 4.47 on the clock. The Lakers established a record. They won nine straight, a mark for consecutive victories in one season in the playoffs before the Sixers knocked them off in game two. Tony is short, and it's still Sixer ball. Last, last touch by McAdoo. And there's players like that that make Riley age two years every minute. Bring it in. They have 24 seconds on their shot clock. Out to Tony. 103-98. The Philadelphia season could be wrapped up here in the last four and a half minutes. They don't do it here, they don't do it. Loop it into Jones. This is the shot inside. And it's L.A. The Lakers. As the game all of a sudden has become a half-court battle. Nixon looking in low to Kareem. He knows Caldwell Jones is five. Now, offensive foul against Kareem. His third foul. Nine years of his active career with the Lakers. He was also a master on the Laker Radio Network. You say he's done everything. Tony. Andrew Tony brings the Sixers to within three points with 3.51 to go. High drama at the four in Inglewood. And I think you'll see a lot of half court for the rest of the way. You won't see very much fast breaking now. You know they like to get C. Jones out of there. And Nixon is looking that way now. Kareem away from the hoop. Sky hooks. Jamal Wilkes, offensive board. Anyone's ball. Bobby Jones fights, but McAdoo winds up with it. And a new clock. 320 in the game. Or at least the fourth period. Nixon. And all of a sudden, this game has turned into a deliberate ball game. That's how much is riding. Kareem hook. Kareem again. Score it, shoot it, it bounces around and bounces in. Foul is on Andrew Tony, his fifth foul. They've expected so much of this man over the years. You almost take him for granted. He's a given, but the fact remains, he has to do it. And as the second all-time scorer, badly wants to win a title tonight. His third title. 18 points, nine rebounds, and five block shots. Six-point game, winding down to three minutes to go. Fourth period, Maurice Cheeks. Bobby Jones crashes the board, but McAdoo gets it to Wilkes. Wilkes. And it's an eight-point game. And a great 
play by Bob McAdoo, getting that out of there and getting the pants in for the fast break. in the Atlantic Division. This year, they lost by five games and then a dramatic seventh game victory in Boston. But how long and how much can they go to the well? They came back in game two, they came back Sunday, and they faced elimination as we have. The clock is running down now. They're going to have to reset the clock. But those people who talk about the Philadelphia 76ers and not winning big games, this is their third world title try. Get there. you got to keep getting there. Teams don't choke. What happens is teams beat the teams to get to the championship, and they lose to a better team. Timeout story. L.A. also has a 20-second timeout. All right, the final minutes. Eight-point lead. Don't forget, Andrew Tony can hit a three-point shot. He's prolific, and that's why Norm Nixon is watching him. Kareem on the switch, inside to Julius Irving, and a foul. A technical, an illegal defense has been called against the Lakers, and that will be a technical foul to be shot. And I think it's on Magic Johnson, but I'm not sure. The second call on an illegal defense. And for the fans who haven't been watching, if you're playing a zone and not guarding a player, you can be called for an illegal defense. It gets very and highly technical on which side of the court you stand and how high up you are. Andrew Tony hits the tee. Magic in the middle. Again. Now here's Magic in the middle there, and there's no one near him, so they shoot the tee. Seven-point lead. For Philadelphia, Andrew Tony and Julius have 57 of their 101 points. Bobby Jones, foul inside. And Magic Johnson gets the finger from Madden. He's pointed for getting the foul, and for Magic, his fifth personal foul. 2.26 to go. And with Tony, with a three point shot available, you can never count the Sixers out. They want to start thinking about that for another couple of minutes. Six-point lead. That technical could be a very important play in that it gives them a chance to get a three-point play without having to shoot a 22-foot shot. Missed the shot. 108-102, 2.24 to go. Only three times in the last 12 years has a team won the world championship on its home court. Last time, Portland in 1977. Lakers, look at that pass. And it didn't great go down. Didn't go down, you're right. Everything by the basket. And Philly can cut it now to four. Two minutes to go. Tony misses the shot. Open man, Nixon finds an opening, and that could be the big one, that could be the big basket. Eight point lead with 143 to go, they're anxious but they can't say it yet. Maurice Chicks, misses, Kareem fighting for the loose ball. Less than two minutes, you see it, 125. And Cheeks blocks the shot, then commits the foul. And time is running out on the Sixers. And the crowd knows it. Pat Riley from Schenectady, New York. And he's an old man now. MVP. 
MVP at Kentucky for three years. And some of the fans have already begun celebrating. The Lakers. There's plenty of time left. Yes, there is. But the Lakers are playing with the style of a champion right now. They definitely have control of it. Now, if Jamal Woods makes these two free throws, it's tough. But you've always got the threat of Andrew Tony getting the three-pointers. And he can make three or four in a row. be and he was tested late in january and early february when the lakers were having problems on defense they were losing they weren't getting blocked shots or defensive rebounds and it was time for pat to go to kareem to say i need some help here he said who am i to talk to kareem he's a great star and i wasn't he expressed fear of doing it but he went to kareem kareem was accommodating and he said if i can work with kareem abdul jabbar i could work with anyone and that was the turning the Philadelphia bench. Magic Johnson has been voted the most valuable player of this championship playoff. His second MVP in three years. And last year, he was out for 45 games with an injured knee as the Lakers lost in the miniseries. And it was Magic who threw up that last futile shot against Houston. And when we started this season, Bill Russell, back on October 30th, they lost in double overtime to the same Houston team. But things have changed since then. Sixer bench. They're not out of it, but it's getting to that point real fast. to go. Cheeks blocked by Magic. He has 11 points, 13 assists, and 12 rebounds. And they're on their feet at the floor. And a foul by Cheeks. Pat Riley replaced Paul Westhead on November the 13th the day after Magic Johnson asked to be traded publicly. All of a sudden, Magic was the bad guy, and Riley was on the spot. And then the Lakers lost Mitch Kupchak, the man who was supposed to be the final piece of the puzzle. And Rambis filled in the long shot free agent. But the Lakers and Rambis, all part of it, had it when they needed it. They finished the regular season strong, and the playoffs have been there. Julius and a foul. 55 seconds, a 12-point lead by the Lakers. Green, four fouls, but that's all I can do. Clint Richardson in for Bobby Jones. Philadelphia cut the lead to three with 3.45 to go, but Kareem hit a three-point play to turn things around. He's leading by 11. And they're going to be popping the courts in the Laker dressing room shortly. And we'll have it all for you. Post-game festivities, Julius Irving has 30 points. And that's his series high. That's how much time before the end of this championship series. Jamal Wills. This is the outside shot. Ten-point lead. Julius Irving. Oh, man. Rebound. McAdoo.
it's over. Tell me what Bob McAdoo has meant to this team. I tell you, an offensive weapon coming off the bench. A big man who can do it all, run the court, block shots too. He's just a big weapon. I tell you, I'm just glad that we had him on our team. All right, the celebration continues here in the Laker locker room. And right now, let's go back to Dick Stockton. of the NBA, Larry O'Brien, and to his right is Dr. Jerry Buss, who is the champion owner this year. And for the 13th year, we have a new champion. We haven't had a repeat since 69, and the Lakers have won two of the last three. So, Larry, make the presentation to Jerry Buss here in a big yes, day. Yes, I'm going to do that, but first, I think we all will join uh, together in accrediting the 76ers. Uh, this was a great series. They were very competitive, and it was a very intense series all the way. And as far as the champions are concerned, the world champions, I want to congratulate the entire Lakers uh, team, Captain Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Pat Riley, the coach, and his whole coaching crew, the organization, the Lakers, and the owner of the Lakers, Jerry Buss. This is the world championship trophy. It's emblematic of the true world champion of basketball. It now goes into the possession of the Lakers. They are to retain it in perpetuity, and it is gold created by Tiffany. And let me lift it now, Jerry, and hand it to you with our congratulations. Good 
Larry, I'm, I'm going to accept this trophy on behalf of the entire team and, of course, the very wonderful coaching staff who had a lot of adversity this year and somehow still brought it home. But most of all, I want to say thank you, and I'm going to accept this trophy also to the fans of the Lakers. I know there are millions and millions and millions of fans who watch this game tonight, and wherever you are, I want you to know the team won it for you, the fans. Thank you very much. Jerry, Jerry, I'd like to ask you a question here. Jerry, when you said adversity, a lot of people say, what kind of adversity can a team like the Lakers have with all those great stars? But you had to make a coaching change at a difficult time this year, and I know that you were on the spot because of it. It turned out to be a good move. Uh, well, as looking backwards, of course, uh, it really worked out well for us. Uh, it, it's tough to make a coaching change in the middle of the year, and obviously we had great talent, but quite honestly, I think there are three or four teams around this league that have uh, tremendous talent also. Uh, we won it, so I'll say we're the best, but uh, there, was, uh, there was a long, rough, hard go, and my hat's off to Philadelphia. Okay, you're looking at the champion Los Angeles Lakers and the crowd out on the court. A big night for the Lakers. And the executive producer of CBS Basketball, Jim Harrington, the game produced by Michael Burks and directed by Sandy Grossman, are thanks to all of the technicians and all of us who have been part. Bob Stenner, Ed Gorin, Joan Vetrano, Bob Dunphy, Brett Crutcher, Bill Brown, Marty Aronoff, our statistician, and all of them. Bill, it's been a great year. Yes, it has. I, I, I don't ever remember enjoying basketball any more than when we won. Well... Last year, they finished by losing in the miniseries. They lost the opener in October, but they wind up the champions. And so this is Dick Stockton for Bill Russell saying so long from the Forum in Inglewood, where the Los Angeles Lakers have won the NBA World Championship four games to two over the Philadelphia 76ers. Be sure to be with us this Saturday as CBS Sports Saturday presents the WBA Junior Featherweight Championship as Sergio Palma defends his crown against Leo Cruz, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central on CBS Sports. The NBA on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports. It is pretty nice and relaxed back here, you know. We just won the world championship. Come <laughs> to him, Amir. There's Amir again. I'm yeah, saying wherever there's a microphone. I got, I got the, the little baby Kareem here. Norm, I'm going to tell you something, man. This club is one heck of a basketball team. Well, I tell you, this is the greatest team I've ever played on. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to see too many other great Boston teams or the other great L.A. teams, but I really don't think there are any teams that can beat us when we're at our best. And the champagne is going to flow. Oh, the champagne is flowing, and tonight is going to be a great night. Okay, Norm, thank you so very much. Right, Norm, Nixon, Norm Nixon of the Los Angeles Lakers. Now let's ease on down here and see if we can if we can get a word in with, uh, with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Just a second. No, we just said we, we had to have it. We had to have it. You know, Kareem, this is the first time that you have won a championship at home, and I know it has a very special meaning to you. Yeah, it means I don't have to get up in the morning and get on a plane, Jim. <laughs> but what a heck of an effort by you. you. You looked like when you went out on the court tonight, like you had that intensity in your eyes that you wanted to win it tonight and that this was it. Well, I knew that after the game Sunday, we had a lot to, to prove because we know we can play better than that. And it was just a matter of us being ready to play and putting the effort out. Because so I knew that the 76ers, they were going to be, they were going to be ready. They're a class team. They proved that all year. Three championships on you that you've won right now. People are starting to talk about a dynasty about this Laker team now. Well, I, I, I just take them one at a time. I'd like to enjoy this one before I start thinking about any, any other time. Kareem, thank you so much and continued greatness to you, my friend. Thanks a lot, Jim. Okay, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar of the Los Angeles Lakers. And let me tell you something, folks. You talk about crowded in this place. We're going to see if we can work our way around now. Hold it. Hold a second. Let's talk to, let's talk to Mrs. Michael Cooper here. Hello, lady. Hi, Jim. This I told you, didn't you I? You did tell me. This is it, God. This is it. We're number one. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much. All right. Let's see if we can work our way around a little bit more. See if we can get to uh, see if we can get to Magic Johnson. Magic. Oh, Jack Curran. 
Jack Curran, ladies and gentlemen, is a trainer who has done so much for this squad. You got the guys well this year, despite a lot of controversy. Well, you know, we get paid to do a job, and we try to do it as best we can, Jimmy, but nobody supports us any more than you do. <laughs> no one. Well, my check in the mail? Uh, yeah. That's what they'll start saying can pretty I soon. Can I say hello to Connie? Yeah, you just did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to... Connie, I hope you heard that. We're going to work our way over now, see if we can get to Magic Johnson, as Magic was named the most valuable player in the in the tournament tonight. See if we can get a word in with Magic. Just have to excuse us a little bit here, folks. We are... Uh, it's a little uh, crowded, I guess you could think, in the locker room. Let's see if we can get in here and uh, get a couple words in with but Unbelievable. So, you know, it's exciting. It measured up. It had high ratings on TV, so it must have measured up to something. <laughs> you know, Magic was just talking to Connie back at the station. She says, congratulations. Oh, uh, Connie, thank you, sweetheart. Number one, all the way for L.A. Hey, Jim, I'd like to say something right now. I want to thank the L.A. fans, because I think they did. They were just as... They were great tonight. I tell you, when we was down, they picked us up. And I think they deserve a lot of credit yeah, tonight. Right. Two MVPs right. in the championships right. for you in three years. Well, they don't mean nothing. Uh, MVPs don't mean nothing to me, Jim. It's all about just uh, playing team basketball. Uh, Kareem, Norman, any of the guys could have won. I'm just happy to really just have the diamond ring be the champ. How about Mac Can Do? Uh, I can't say enough about the guy. He was just great. And... He was great on both ends, offensively and defensively. And the Lakers are world champions. You know, we had to get it, Jim. We had to get it. It was just a feeling we had coming into this locker room today. The guys were revved up and ready to play. And I want to thank you. It, it, you've been great all season. Let's, let's see if we can do it next year again. Now let's go to Vegas and see the fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, all right. Let's go to Vegas and see the fight. Let's turn around here. Magic Johnson named the most valuable player. In it. Now here is Bob McAdoo. Bob. You know, we, you talked all year long about this is the thing that you were after. Here it is, my friend, world champion. That's right, world champion. Get ready to fit me for a ring. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Isn't it a great feeling because you knew that the guys really, they wanted to win it for themselves, but they wanted you to have a taste of that because you've accomplished so much. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of different stories on this team. Kurt from Greece, Clay Johnson from the uh, CBA, and me from the worst team in the league to the <laughs> best team in the league. And the feeling is really hard for, for you to explain. It's hard for you to put into words right now, isn't it? Yeah, I, I probably won't know what really hit me till tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, that's right, bro. Come on over here, bro. Come on over. We're going to get Jim Brewer. Over. Come on over here, Jim Brewer. Come on over here, Jim Brewer. Bro, bro, bro has been in the league nine years with me. He finally got a championship also. Hello, and the champagne will flow. That's 73. It's good. I can see it in your eyes. We're going to have to pass out the visine in the morning. Now here, you talk about you talk about an unsung hero. Turn on around here, Kurt Rambis. Turn around here, and let's let the, let's let everybody in Los Angeles get a look at you. And I want you to get your feelings right now because I know at the beginning of the year you hardly thought any of this would happen. Yeah. I'm extremely happy right now. We've got a we've got a great group, group of guys right here, and uh, we're, <laughs> I'm the man. <laughs> I'm the man. You are the man, and this is Clark Kent. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, we won an NBA championship, but uh, we've got some great players on our team, great human beings. Hey, it was it was a dog fight all the way, and here's the trophy. Hold the trophy down here, too, so everybody can see it. There it is. The trophy and the ring. That's what it's all about, my friends. That's right. That's right. That's what it's all about. That's where you uh, you start in September. You know, everybody together working in training camp real hard, and here we are. The champagne's going to flow tonight, friend. No question about it. Pass out the visine in the morning. Okay. Okay. Well, Connie, I just have to tell you, you talk about work. We earned our we earned our money. And I tell you what, I want to get McGee over here. Come over here, Mike. We get Mike. Let me tell you something. We got a young man here who's a rookie in the league, uh -huh. and here you are on a world championship. I, I, I love it. I love it. First year, I haven't played very much, but you know, when the coach calls on me, I, I come in and try to do what he asks me to do. And you know, I'm, I'm very, very, very pleased. You know, it's been guys in the league 10 or 12 years who haven't received a ring, and so I feel very, very lucky that they received the ring my first year. Everybody's drinking uh, sociably now. <laughs> yep, I'm telling you. You're going to get down to some serious drinking a little later, aren't you? Oh, yes, you know that. Okay, listen, congratulations and continued greatness to you because that's the first of, we hope, many, many rings. Thank you very much, Jeff. Oh, I tell you, Connie Jess, you know, you talk about enthusiasm and excitement. 
We've been with this ball club throughout the course of the year, and they've had many, many ups, and they've had many, many downs. But the one thing that these Lakers believed in, and that was themselves, I think at one point of the year, they just happened to say, hey, to heck with the fans if they're going to boo us, to heck with the press if they're going to boo us. We're going to stick together, and we're going to come away as world champions. And for the second time in three years, the Los Angeles Lakers are champions of the National Basketball Association. And coming up at 11 o'clock, we'll have some more highlights and more post-game interviews. So, Jess, Connie, back to you in the studio.